kind of miss records. Like scratching records? Yeah. Like DJs and stuff? Like vinyls. Now they have Now, I know that's like a trend, like, to get vinyls and stuff like that, but it's such a, like, calming sound. I don't know. Like a crackling fireplace? Kind of, yeah. But I but I wouldn't want to get modern day music on a vinyl. That right, seems it would totally to ruin the illusion. Yeah, because they do have those, which I don't understand. But you want some like stuff that's like barely recorded by a microphone. It's like, wah, 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 <laughs> wah, wah. yes, yeah, exactly. With some crackling pops, you want a real damaged uh, vinyl as well. You want it all scratched Something, up. Well, I, I don't necessarily want like skips and and you know like really annoying noises. You want to have to buy a new really needle every time. Away. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. <laughs> now it becomes like this. Another maintenance thing that I have to deal with, like cleaning all my vinyl yeah. records. And I have right behind equipment. me, practically in arm's reach, a uh, broken record player that I, I it's just something about the, the arm was like automatic. Um, mm-hmm. Like when you put on a record, it would automatically like move over and put the needle at the beginning. Yeah. But I don't know what happened. I don't know if I moved it wrong or if it just it's old because it's like yeah. from the 80s uh, or 70s even. Um and yeah, it's just something in it. Like I was trying to move the arm normally in a position where it's like loose and it wasn't. And I heard like a pop and now the arm doesn't like work. <laughs> oh no. I wonder how hard so, of a fix it is. Yeah. I wonder if there's just like a little gear or something in there that's stripped. Um, in which case I could probably like 3D print something, but then I have to take it all apart, figure <laughs> out what it originally looked like and then recreate a piece based on what I think a destroyed part looks like. So yeah, that's a whole thing. That is a whole thing. Welcome to the No Kidding Podcast, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to cut Lisa. all that in. I'm going to loop it all in because that was a interesting uh, little bit. Yeah, um, I just jumped right in, you know, guys. I mean, yeah. Sorry, sorry for the... Uh, that actually happened last time, so that's why I'm yeah. conscientious of it. Oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah. welcome to the <laughs> No Kidding Podcast, the biannual podcast of uh, brother and sister just being curious um, I'm not sure if that really relates to the podcast anymore, but here we are. It does. I think so, because <laughs> we're always curious about stuff. That's true. And like how to fix it, my record player. <laughs> like that. And just like what's going on with each other in the world. And yeah, like things, more specifically things and, but also the world. But yeah, anyway, so speaking of, so I mean, like, gosh, you know, I didn't write down any um references or anything oh actually before i jump into that and we're talking about record players doesn't mom have a record player at her house is that the same one you're talking about <laughs> that one is also mine <laughs> uh, oh, that is yours? i've been given several record players um oh, you can okay probably, so i saw one there you probably have that one if you want i don't know if at this point mom is probably like oh that's mine so you might have to fight her for it <laughs> but uh i don't know if she'd want it oh. either it's the reason i went with the one that i i got um is because it's that one, the one at uh, mom's was, uh, it was our grandmother's on our father's side. And um, it's just really bulky. It's It includes like an AM, FM radio and everything in it. And mm-hmm. it's just kind of big. Um, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I'm never going to like listen to the radio on, <laughs> on no, an old record not player. Now. So, um, or at all. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I ended up getting, um, just from our father, like his old, uh, record player that's now broken. Oops. Um, that, uh, is much more compact and seems to be of a higher build quality. Uh, so So you couldn't like use the parts from one for the other. I, they seem completely different. Yeah. I don't think, cause this one, one of the features was that it has that like automatic arm. So I don't think that's like a common thing. Well, it is somewhat common, but I don't think it's in that other record player. I think that one's pretty basic. So I wonder, because I know growing up, we always had, a, we did have a record player at the house, but I don't know what happened to that. I wonder if that's the one that dad gave you or if it's like, I don't know, mom just maybe sold it. it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, this one that I have is very, from dad, is yeah, uh, very plain. You. And it's just like, no, it's, it was his like old one. So oh, um, okay. he said he got it when he was a teenager. So Oh, wow. It's, uh, yeah, just like a little like brown wooden panel on the front. It's like very simplistic. So yeah, maybe that was it. I don't, I don't specifically remember what it looked like. I kind of do, but 
It was so long ago. You know, your mind kind of warps the way things really were. Yeah. I feel so. like the <laughs> most like retro thing I remember from our house was that old like console TV, you know, like the... Oh, yeah. When it used to be like built into your console. <laughs> And it was like, yeah, yeah. it had that, that uh, really satisfying knob on it that every like time you turned, it was like, chum, 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 chum. Yeah, yeah. That, was, I, that was the only TV we had for a really, really long time. I can't remember. I'm trying to think of like when we got an actual like regular TV. I don't know. I can't remember. But anyways, I was trying to think of, so jumping forward back to backwards but forwards back back in time forward back in time anyways i'm some way in time of, yeah so there i've been coming across these youtube people lately who have been so interesting because <clears throat> they're like they're like scientific but also mechanical and just creating these interesting things and um uh, i just i'm trying to think of who they are so that i can recommend some of them but the problem is is that i watch them on mike's channel on because he's the one that has his channel on our tv uh, so like i can't go i can't just like pop into my history and see what we watch i have to go to the tv and look is it so stuff I made keep, here that guy's great mm-hmm. stuff made here let me look them up mark rober uh Ooh, Adam Savage. Adam Savage makes great stuff. Not so much like your well, engineering yeah, he's stuff, kind but of like, like prop stuff. Yeah, stuff made here. He's one of the guys. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you tell me about him? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I, I because watch him a lot. I, hey, the best yeah. part of his channel, I believe. Yeah, now I remember saying this on the podcast. The best part of his channel is his wife. <laughs> She's oh, by far the star right. of that channel. That. Yeah, we did talk about that. But okay, so he was one of them. But there was another guy that we've watched more recently. What was his name? I'm never going to remember. I'm going to have to go to like his history and then find it and then tell you guys, I guess, because I'm just so bad at like remembering names and stuff, especially when there are things like that, like stuff made here. I'm not going to remember. Like if it's a person's name, I might remember it easier. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but they're basically things like that where it's somebody who's just taking random things and creating something unique. There's oh, there's one of them is like backyard scientist <laughs> he's one i like i like that uh concept oh have you seen like alan pan or um i probably suggested you like michael reeves or like oh, what's the other guy's name osmond uh, his name is michael reeves and osmond or is michael reeves different yeah it's a different guy oh okay uh, michael reeves is like a robot guy um, yeah, he makes mm-hmm. a few things. Like he made, I think you said you. We're just recapping for the uh, audience who's probably already listened to this. But the uh, um, guy who made the Boston Dynamics robot go piss on Boston Dynamics. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know. I kind of like stuff like that. I just kind of. So I feel like. I feel like I have all of these ideas of things but i don't have the skill set to sort of like implement them so it's nice that i can watch people do it but at the same time i i feel like i would really love to work with my hands and create something um so i don't know maybe i should think of like a cool project to get into and do smart home stuff work. like it's smart, it's basically it's stuff? like it's like half tech half handyman stuff it's cool Oh, yeah, I guess. But that's like expensive. You just keep buying smart home stuff. Like, I don't even know what else to do to my house. You just get it on sale. Recently, there was a sale for, um, uh, oh, yeah, Black Friday. I'm like, what's that thing that they have sales for? I I missed that completely. Yeah, it just passed you by. Well, after you're done eating all the turkey and stuff, I feel like it's really not that great now. And it's more just like, oh, there's some good deals on Amazon. It's not like Mm -hmm. run out to your Best Buy and grab a fridge. Um, So... Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of people sleep on it, but um, yeah, the uh, the deals I got on Amazon were like really good for um, Akara products. Like they make some Z-Wave stuff, and so I was able to get like mo- a couple motion sensors and a couple vibration sensors and some water leak detectors, so you can like you know make sure your house isn't flooding. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> all that good stuff. Ooh, we have my that favorite, for the cabin. My favorite automation is I put a recent automation is i put a humidity sensor in my bathroom and then i made the extractor fan a smart switch so now whenever the humidity goes above a certain amount the extractor fan automatically turns on it's great oh my gosh what is that like what is what do you mean what is what happens 
you know the like extractor fan that's in most bathrooms yeah so like when you take a shower and it gets all like super steamy yeah you can like i have it so the extractor fan comes on automatically and like empties it out of oh steam weird <laughs> <laughs> i guess gosh there's so many things you don't even think about yeah, I, it was an interesting when I got the product. I actually um, the vibration sensor specifically. They jumped mm-hmm. out and they were like on the package. They had some you know ideas on there like you can know when your mail arrives. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Like you could stick it to your mailbox and then like whenever they open the mailbox, it'll like vibrate the sensor and then it'll let me know that the mail is there. And I was like, that's a good idea. And I repurposed it because I was <laughs> like, I'm gonna put it on my um, washer dryer and like be able to tell when the washer dryer is done going. Oh, well. Um, Okay. But then my washer dryer, well, my washer specifically broke and then my wife's been wanting a stackable <laughs> ones. So we ended up getting um, stackable washer dryers that are smart. So I was like, oh, I don't need this anymore. Um, <laughs> but so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go. how are they smart? Like, do they, uh, do they connect to your phone? Theoretically. They literally just got here today. So I haven't oh, uh, tried oh, okay. them, but apparently they have an app and they'll let you know. They'll give you like a little <laughs> notification when they're done or whatever. That's mostly oh. what I want to know. Because I always forget, and then like tomorrow. But why don't I go you just to... set a timer? Like you put your clothes in and say, you know, Google, set me a timer for or Alexa, I could do whoever that. it is you talk to. <laughs> like, but that would be work, and I'm not a fan. Oh, okay, of work. okay. Um, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's that's not very smart. It's the my house is supposed to be smart so that I don't have to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, also, like I think there is that like this particular dryer has some setting where it's like smart dry and you just like press a button and it'll go until it's dry and (laughs) there's not actually like a set time or whatever that's kind of nice so i would like that because like there's so many times where i'm washing sheets and blankets and stuff and i have to keep going in shaking it out putting it back in drying it some more and then i feel it nope still wet put it back in (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's really bad like when you have comforters and stuff yeah um so yeah it's it but the problem is the uh, I it was like great now I have a purpose for this vibration sensor that lost its purpose. Oh right! But I put yeah. it out okay. there and it just it just barely doesn't connect. Like it basically it connects. Like I could put it out there and I'm like yeah it's connected. But after a few minutes it'll drop and it'll never reconnect. And I'm like ah dang it. And then okay. even when it's connected it doesn't like it, it. They overplayed how sensitive it is. Maybe actually I should look into that. There might be a way to adjust the sensitivity of it. But um, the other one I'm just using really as uh, overkill to tell when my 3d printer stops whirring because mm-hmm. it, it'll it'll jiggle so the other one i just slept on that there is a way to like get the 3d printer to actually report over the network like if it's finished but it's annoying and complicated so this is easier <laughs> yeah and that's uh, true. when they were on sale they were like super cheap all the products but some of them were like 10 bucks for like the leak sensors so i literally they're like the easiest thing in the world you just set them to pull out the little tab uh, between it and the battery and then you just like throw it behind your toilet or whatever and then if it if it ever gets wet if it's ever in standing water it'll alert you yeah actually we have those for the vacation rental in the cabin oh yeah you gotta have that for anywhere is. you're not like constantly there yeah and it, and it works because it it worked once <laughs> oh really yeah oh, we boy. already had like an issue where we had a guest staying there and they they messaged me and were like um we don't have any water and I was like, what? You don't have any water? And then I had to go through the whole thing of trying to figure out why they don't have water. And then um, so dad set up water sensors. And um, basically, so he went and he logs in, you know, because it's remote. So he mm-hmm. logs in and he's like, OK, well, yeah, it does say the water's off. So I'm going to turn it back on. And then if it goes off again, we know that there's like an issue. So he did that and it did go off again. And then um the people that were staying there said, said, oh, we found the water sensor and or something like that. And I was like, oh, well, what? Like, don't move the water sensor because he said we we turned off the water sensor. So everything's good. Everything's fine now. And we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa we don't want to turn it off. But like, so put it back and then we'll figure out what to do. So then dad called the guy and they figured out that the daughter that was staying, she spilled water behind the toilet, which is where the sensor was. And so it triggered the sensor and but when they washed cleaned up all the water and everything um everything was fine and the water came back on so this this, that sounds like a story to me i feel like somebody clogged the toilet they don't want (laughs) to they don't want to talk about it 
Right. I know. We're like, oh, okay, well, we don't know what happened there. But because um, I was like, how do you spill water behind the toilet? Yeah, it's like she's like, wa- she's walking around in the bathroom with a cup of water like you do. <laughs> yeah. and she tripped. <laughs> right. Because there's not like a tub back there. I don't think. Yeah. The one that they were in. Like maybe if and... you, there might be a thing where like some people like to soak their feet and stuff. So they might have got like a bucket or something. Yeah, maybe. But... We don't really know. But um, no, anyway, it all got fixed and everything. You mean you don't have we a camera at- in the bathroom? <laughs> no, we're not allowed to have cameras inside the property at all, yeah. um, which is fine. But it was just, it was interesting to see that it actually did work. And very cool. It worked very quickly and very well. Yeah, I want to get the it, automatic shutoff valve as well, but I haven't gotten to that stage yet. Yeah. So what does your sensor tell you? It just tells you there's water? Yeah, it'll just alert. It'll like buzz my phone and be like, um, your mm-hmm. bathroom's flooding for some reason. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Yeah, I mean, most um, of the time I'm there, so I'll just be like, what? And I'll go check. <laughs> and then if somebody's in there, I'll be like, uh, hey, you, you all right? <laughs> the next thing that we kind of been looking into getting is, um, like, I think it's Ring, but they have smoke detectors and CO2. It's like a sensor for all of that and carbon monoxide. And it just... Yeah, it, they, like, have, they have oh, really oh, cheap stuff, too. If you go on, yeah. uh, on Black Friday, they have the... Um, they have the best deal like, because they're like a year from now. With you mean? Amazon. Well, <laughs> just, I mean, just wait or, a year. <laughs> or Prime Day or whatever. Like Amazon yeah. has a lot of sales, and they always like promote their products first. So, um, yeah, they have like sure. the uh, VOC sensors, right? Like the volatile organic compounds, so you can like tell if there's gas or something, <laughs> gas leak or whatever. Yeah. Well, the reason that I like I've been wanting to get it is because I keep wanting to use our fireplace because we have a fireplace. But we're too worried about using it because we've never used it before since we moved in. And <laughs> we don't really know the state of the fireplace itself. And Just start a fire in your house. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, we're more worried about carbon monoxide coming in and like, us not really knowing because so many people die from that. So yeah, we're like, true. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Like, I really, I love the concept of a fireplace, but then I'm like, oh, it just never crossed my mind that it could actually be an issue because we grew up with one and we never had any problems. And we so, had a very like, uh, uh, safety conscious parent. Well, that's true. Yeah. True. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you get a detector, you should be fine. Just get a... I know. Like, really what we should do is hire an inspector to come in and inspect it and just tell us it's fine. But... Nah, that's way too much money. Buy, just buy a sensor and if you start to die, <laughs> turn it off. Exactly. Leave the house. <laughs> Oh, man. Speaking of dying. So we've been watching a lot of true crime lately. Um, I don't know how or why it started. I mean, I used to really be into it and I am still into it. But I've kind of this past year, I've more and more been distancing myself from it. Not necessarily intentionally, but kind of just kind of trying to, you know, surround myself with a little bit more positivity. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You're like after COVID, it just hits different. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like you kind of get it gets you just need need to change you once need space. in a while. Like you yeah. need space from things like that. Yeah. So anyways, but we've been watching more recently because um, I don't really know how we started, but it all started with like we heard some story about these teenagers that killed someone. And then we're like, wow. I mean, I've seen I've heard plenty of stories in the past of like kids killing, but it's just such a whole different genre of true crime that's so so macabre weird. yeah it's so <laughs> the like most oh dark. My God. they're like kids you know like what are these kids doing that's like what every horror movie is because it's like the violation of something sacred and innocent right they always yeah. think like the kid the devil or some like they always if there's like a possession <laughs> they always get the kids right i mean i'm not trying to make light of it or anything but i'm just like it's crazy and so we started down this rabbit hole of just like kid murders i don't know like not kid murders but mur- kids, kids murdering <laughs> which murdering. is and, which is worse i guess kid murders would be worse yeah yeah definitely but and it's just kind of sad it's a lot of it is sad because they don't it's almost like they don't really recognize the severity yeah. of what they're doing until it's done and then they're like oh crap like this is actually bad what i did and like this is actually i mean some of them are just crazy and they are they know that it's bad and they know like they're just crazy so but um and then the worst are like the kids that you know like 
it's all in who you hang out with. So it's like the kids who hang out with this, these people who are just crazy and psychopaths, but then they're like implicated in it because they were there and they were part of it. But like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it was just Listen, like, man, I didn't want to go along with it, but they just started murdering. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. There was like one instance where there was like a group of kids that where this happened, but they were all, they all played a part in the murder. So like, and they, and it was planned out. So they all knew it was going to happen. But I think some of them didn't really fully believe that it would happen. And some of them were like... It's like a gang induction. Started, yeah, it was like, once it started <laughs> happening, and they were like, okay, I guess, you know, like, now it's happening. So, like, I guess I got to do what I got, you know, do what I got to do to get out of, like, to right. get through it's, it. And it's then, like, once the dead body's there, it's like, okay, well, I guess we're all burying this. <laughs> exactly. And then and they're like, but you were involved. Like, you did help. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, like, at the time, it was like... I just felt like I didn't have any choice. I didn't pull did the trigger, man. Yeah, exactly. And, and some of them thought like, oh, well, I didn't actually do the killing. So I'm not really going to go to jail for this, right? And they're like, actually, yeah. Well, they probably did have um, a concept of that. And that's probably why they helped cover it up or whatever the case was. You know, go yeah. So it. anyway, <laughs> it was crazy. I don't know. There's so many of those stories, though. And I'm shocked at how many stories there are. Just like kids. Yeah going going wild and then we also got down that genre of like like the bad kids who go to who go to jail and the kids who like get put in these bait these boot camps and stuff and i just i feel really bad for them i mean they're like really bad kids so it's like some something has to happen they have to have some n- nothing at home is working nothing what that they tried is working so they put them in these like boot camps or like these crazy like prison camps and stuff and it, but they like get treated so like prisoners, you know, and, yeah. and they're, but they're just kids. So it's like, where's that line? Where's the, where, like, how do you control a really terrible, bad child without crossing the line of it becoming like abusive and like bad, yeah. you know, like they're, they're going to have trauma for the rest of their lives from this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just such watching, a weird world I've just stumbled across. That I'm yeah, just... I, I was watching recently like a debate over kind of like the idea of the prison system and reformations therein. But it was just kind of interesting because a lot of people brought up things about how like, you know, just statistics about how if incarceration even really helps or if it just takes like bad people that are potentially in, you know, mentally unwell scenarios or they might be people that are you know really down and low in life to where they feel like they need to steal something to survive or something like that and then putting locking them up basically and making them criminals that can't get jobs or like and putting them in a place where they can't get mental help and then not really like being able to fix them in any way like it's not like i think there's a lot of ways that um the prison system fails people like that but oh absolutely yeah i agree i think that What's the point of it if it's not rehabilitating? I mean, obviously, there's higher crimes where, you know, rehabilitation is probably not you know, possible for for some people. But I feel like especially the younger kids and the kids who because it really just perpetuates more crime and more violence and more everything. So I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to know. Like, And I there are so many prisons that do they try to do as much outreach, outreach as they can and they try to do programs and things like that. But then once they get out and they get back into their familiar, you know, ways yeah, once they get, around they can, the same people that, yeah. Yeah, they can like, they can rehabilitate in prison and say like, okay, yeah, I want to become a right. good person and I want to like learn things and stuff. But then they get ejected out into a world that won't hire them and they have, to have nothing left for them out there anymore and they have no options, you know. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. well, I guess I got to do... Something that the law won't allow me to do to be able to survive. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really hard, which is, you know, it's best to just stay out of that system to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's interesting because I actually, uh, in that, in what, what I was looking at, I guess, as far as Western societies, I don't know about like uh, other parts of the world, but I guess the idea of prison isn't really that old. Like, it was pretty much like, I forget the the exact date, but it was kind of fascinating. I don't know, like 16th century or 15th century, maybe. But it was just kind of like they used to just, you know, like people lived in smaller communities. They lived in like villages and stuff. And it was pretty much like nobody wanted to, you know, be the person who locks somebody up and just watches them all the time and feeds them. <laughs> so it was right. basically like if you did something bad enough that like we need to correct you, it's going to be like corporal punishment. It's going to be like a lashing or removing a hand or yeah. if you did something really bad, like hanging you. Um, but other than that, like, 
you get like fined or something you know you it, there but locking up was like never um like the like it, it wasn't something anybody wanted to do it wasn't something so, uh, society wanted to waste time and resources on just like keeping somebody in a cell so it's kind of interesting that like it's kind of it's something that we don't even really have like um that much history and knowledge on going back like you know all the it's yeah. like <laughs> it's just kind of interesting to think of it as like sort of a new thing mm-hmm. um, that kind of gives me hope a little bit to know that there's so much progress that could be done you know that's such a new yeah. thing that it's just evolving and hopefully it'll evolve in a good way but you never know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the hope <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I feel like it might have come about a little bit in response to people probably wanting the, you know, death punishment less. Like, we started to, s- at, like, as we got bigger and bigger societies and we, like, you know, started to become a little more civilized and mm-hmm. think about people as like, hey, maybe we shouldn't just murder people. And it's like, oh, well, then what do we do with them? Well, if we keep them in a box, I guess. But then how does that really help? <laughs> like, they're just like, we don't want to yeah. kill them and we don't want to think about them. So what do we do? And they're like, just lock them up and put them somewhere where we don't have to deal with them yeah um, that's interesting so it was like the history of prisons or that you watched was it a video or um yeah some things i well like one of the things that came up that i felt felt like was pretty informative i watched a lot of her videos uh, it was philosophy tube um oh okay and there was yeah that was one of the things i saw was the there's also like a netflix documentary and stuff but um yeah, yeah. that one is like really bite-sized and it, i think it really highlights the issue pretty well um yeah so yeah we watched a lot of um prison documentaries they're all always fascinating to me as i think pretty much anything that's kind of outside your everyday norm would be but <laughs> yeah it's, it's like it's kind of like true crime but it's like after the true crime <laughs> yeah yeah but it's so interesting louis threw actually did a whole prison series which of course i would reference but um i think um gordon ramsay did one too what and like yeah. like okay i gotta ask though on prison food or <laughs> well he did um cook in the prison kitchen but he did also like talk about the system and because his brother i guess is in prison or he went to prison and he so he has like a connection there and he feels for his brother and what his brother went through and everything so i think that oh. was kind of what um inspired him to do it yeah but um yeah it was kind of interesting um so but of course food was really it was related and and in there i think that's what got him in to begin with but um you gotta have a there's been tons (laughs) a prison cook-off come on (laughs) i'm trying to remember what he did with the food I, i feel like it was something like that where like there was some kind of um competition between some of the the prisoners who were chosen to be part of this thing, I think it's hard for me to remember that part because I really didn't care about that part so much. It was more about the other parts. (laughs) Right. But, um, but it was still interesting. So worth a, worth a watch, but yeah, it's crazy. And I've listened to a few podcasts, like, um, uh, what was the one where it's like wrongfully convicted was one that's pretty interesting. It's like a different side to that system of like some people who have been wrongfully convicted and um and just interesting like what they went through and how they finally were you know yeah that's crazy that's gotta be like the the worst (laughs) when you're in prison you're like that's my biggest prison fear is like yeah being or like convicted for something like what jumps to mind is that a WNBA player that got arrested in russia for like having some weed oh my god it's gosh, kind of wild because yeah. it's like yeah that could happen here but not like really into that severity you know yeah and so it's just kind of wild to think like if you go to another country or something like thinking about like i have no idea what the laws are here like i could you know step oh, yeah, on you definitely I, find out the laws before you go yeah but i mean like even u.s law like stuff all the time like people are like oh you know that's illegal right i'm like what <laughs> like you can't learn the entire <laughs> law um, that's true of a nation and so it's kind of wild that you know obviously like ignorance of the law can't be an excuse because anybody could just say they didn't know but it's yeah kind of insane to you know if somebody's just you know, ends up in Mexico for work or something and they end up like in prison because they didn't know that whatever, walking outside on Thursdays was illegal. (laughs) (laughs) Just like, well, too bad. Yeah. We also watch like some of those 
interrogation shows where they're like it's when they find the killer but then they're they interview them and so it's all about their interrogation or like their questioning part or whatever no oh, where is it's this? crazy to me well there's a couple there's like the show 48 hours is kind of like some there's a murder and then in, okay. within 48 hours they have to catch the people and so there's lots of um interrogations and things but then on youtube there's tons of yeah that's what i was thinking of <laughs> yeah i wondered there's if there's tons I, of them yeah there's like before, you but... can watch like a three hour interrogation of things yeah um there's some youtubers just... that do like breakdowns and stuff and they're like yeah you see at this minute mark and then they're like later on detective so-and-so said that like that's the moment they knew they did it or whatever <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah wow. but it is wild <laughs> to me like how many people just talk without a lawyer present or without any kind yeah, of Yeah, it's crazy. Any, like, I would immediately be like, well, maybe I wouldn't. I wonder if it's just like, it's hard because like, you know, and I think that's a, a, oftentimes what police are trained to harp on and like, uh, yeah. like to find the pressure points of, but like people want, whether they're innocent or guilty, they want, they're in a high pressure situation where their innocence is questioned and they want to mm-hmm. set the record straight and they don't want to wait. Like they, they're like, I can explain it. If I just tell him, like what I'm thinking, like it's gonna, everything's gonna go blow away. Like, yeah. You know? And then yeah. as soon as they open their mouth, they just start rambling and they just, they're like trying to answer questions honestly or fake honestly. And, mm-hmm. you know, it just snowballs and becomes like a, a problem, <laughs> a whole problem. <laughs> That's then, true. Like, I think it's like this false sense of security that they feel once they get going. Then they're like, it's not gonna happen to me. Like, I'm being honest. I'm telling, or like, I'm, I know how to trick the system or I know how to do this or I know what to say. And so they just talk and talk and I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Not that I don't want them to get convicted if they're obviously did something wrong. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, what are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. Or like there's occasionally like I saw one interrogation that was um, a guy got arrested because he got off the bus like near a crime, near a robbery. And he was wearing the same like color hoodie, essentially. And mm-hmm. he's go he's sitting there like trying to tell him he's like, No, I wasn't like I'm innocent and then like just the more he was talking, he was basically like confirming that he was in the area and stuff and that he like oh, went yeah. by that store or something. But he's like, But I didn't rob it and he's like, Well, I don't know, we're getting more and more evidence that you were around the time <laughs> and then it's just like, oh, no. no, but I'm just trying to tell you and like they ended up like finding exactly. on the CCTV that it wasn't him. But it was like Oh my gosh, in the, for him. In the course of like him trying to explain his innocence, like the cop was like, Oh, I'm building him in I'm, I'm building a case around him. if he didn't have that cctv footage they might have locked exactly him up, you know? which is why i think like oh my gosh so many people um but and also there's so many interviews where i think like how how sleazy the cops are being i mean i know that's their job is to try to like you know mind games get something out of you and play mind games and manipulate and stuff like that but Sometimes, though, they can be real, like, like, they'll interview you for 10 hours straight and just be, and just, like, make your life totally miserable. And I'm thinking, like, what if this person is innocent? This poor person has to go through this crap. And maybe, like, if they are in any way mentally weak, you know, for yeah. any reason, like, they have a disability or, like, anxious or just, just anything. An- like, something. I'm like, what if they just, like, say something, you know, just to, like... Because think of how many times you're getting yelled at by a parent. Like, I mean, I'm thinking mine specifically. <laughs> where I'm just like, I'm going to say whatever. I don't care. Like, I'm going to say whatever you want to hear. Because yeah, I'm just, so sick of this. this like, I'm just sick end. of it. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, okay, sure. Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, so, but at the same time, I, I understand, like, the need for it. And like, the people who do actually get, you know, they give in and they they actually tell the truth and then they find out all the evidence they tell them like all the evidence of like where everything is and everything like that and it's like wow you know yeah Yeah. and then there's i saw kind of the flip side a few uh interviews that were of like career criminals that like refused a lawyer but also like really like knew the police's game and were just kind of Mm -hmm. like telling just enough to be like look it wasn't me i wasn't there but that's that's all i'm gonna tell you (laughs) (laughs) yeah and he's like, well, I need to ask you about this specifically. So I'm not going into that or I'm leaving. You know, am I under arrest? Can I get up and leave right now? And then he's like, you could leave. And he's like, okay, well, then I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's also interesting, the whole um, nonverbal 
science behind it, like the psychology and like watching people's mannerisms and how people can like you can just watch what they do and how they react and like little things that they do and they end up being triggers or like things that sort of implicate them in a way. Yeah. Where a lot of police officers are are, are investigators and um, interrogators is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. They've they're trying to learn to watch out for all that stuff, but um, I don't know. It's just interesting. And I, I do wonder if like how true it is because I always watch the video where I'm watching it and um, and then they end up being guilty and I'm like, okay, yo, that was obvious. But what if I watch the si- a same interaction and like somebody who's innocent is doing the same thing? Am yeah. I going to think, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But that kind of stuff's fascinating to me. I always felt like, you know, in another life, I would like to be in forensics or some kind of like investigative um thing like that like not i don't know that i would want to do interrogation because i i don't think that, that i would be very good interrogator that's like a terrible job but just kind of behind the scenes yeah i detect- actually it was, it was really cool they had a program they instituted the very last year i was in uh, high school and it was only for seniors so it just worked out for me oh, cool. um but it was like where you could essentially pick a major <laughs> like you could like it was supposed to be like to get ready for um college so mm-hmm. you could like pick a major and then you would take, you would get one class, one of your periods would be like something to do with that major. Um, uh, so you actually got to like pick one of your classes, which you couldn't do otherwise in public school at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, yeah, definitely. And I picked, I tried to pick like the funnest thing. So I picked forensic science. And I remember oh, wow. that class was so cool because we learned all about like mass spectrometry and like how people like test for DNA. And um, we got to like, you know, try dust for fingerprints and like all this like cool stuff. Wow. Um, I, I got so extra jealous. credit for reading uh, like somewhat accurate uh, uh, mystery novels and stuff. <laughs> it's <was> great. <laughs> I got so much out of that class. That sounds so awesome. I would have loved that class. They didn't have that, obviously, when I was there, but. They Top by Miss Goldberg. Cool. Oh, okay. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, it was the, really but cool. The closest I got was a college. I took clinical psych- or uh, criminal psychology for my psych major. And that was like one of the coolest classes that I can remember taking. It was so fascinating just like learning about criminal psychology. It was, it was crazy. On the flip Helping. side, I took organizational psychology. That was... Oh yeah, boring. yeah. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> like sounds... if if people are in cubicles for too long, they want to kill themselves. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Well, yeah, no, that's why I will <laughs> never ever do that again. Uh, yeah. And they're like, if anybody ever makes a threat about harming people <laughs> in the workplace, uh, don't take it as a joke. And I'm like, okay. Seriously. <laughs> wow, that's like a whole nother genre. True crime. There's so many genres. It's crazy. Yeah, but true. it's so interesting and sad. But it's just I don't know. I think I'm. Well, very some of fascinated. it's just fascinating. Like I feel like some some criminals don't really harm society that much, and it's just kind of fascinating. Like mm-hmm. I mean, obviously there shouldn't be counterfeiters, but reading about like high stakes counterfeiters that like uh, <laughs> were chased by the feds, and they were like meanwhile printing like millions of dollars and going on these crazy sprees. It's like, wow, it's so cool. And it's like, nobody really got hurt. I mean, like, you know, I guess yeah, like the it, USD like, got devalued a little bit, but <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. Like the links some people will go to. And I think, gosh, like it's hard enough for me to do X, Y, Z in my normal everyday life. How am I going <laughs> yeah. to create some kind of crazy scheme? I don't know. It's funny. Yeah. Or like um, there was that movie American Made where it was like obviously running drugs is bad, but it was about a drug runner. And mostly it's pretty like he's not a violent guy. He's just a guy who flies a plane um, to avoid like radar and like the FAA and tries to like smuggle in cocaine or something. But there's obviously more Mm. to the story. But it's an interesting movie and stuff like that that's kind of like less about violent crimes and more about just like criminal mindsets of like how do you get around like – the government essentially yeah speaking of violent crimes with movies um there's a new movie out on netflix right now um it has brad pitt in it i'm trying to think of what it's called i just watched it like a couple days ago um what is it called 
Uh, put it on. I'll check it. Anyways, it's very, it's kind of a, I like the concept of the movie because um, it's very uh, up my alley as far as just like secret agents and bullet train they have a they have a bullet train that's it they have a mission and (laughs) i was like you know (laughs) maybe she's talking about bullet train and then he said did you see it oh yeah definitely yeah i did it's incredibly violent like what the heck (laughs) i was like whoa 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 like i'm all for this movie but like let's scale back the like blood and gore for (laughs) i mean it's kind of sad I don't want to go in, no spoilers, but <laughs> yeah, there's a part I where I was like, like dang, that's, dang. that's too bad. Um, <laughs> but it but was great. I, movie, I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I liked I really liked it. I just thought like well actually really there was just the one um that one sequence of them explaining like the amount of people they've killed. The oh, two yeah. The two brothers. Yeah, that was basically the only scene where I was like, "Come on, like, can we like?" Well, it was just it, it was just a montage of killing. It was. It was just like kill, kill, kill. I don't like, like. Oh my god! Of like emotionless like, killing too. Yes, and like, I, I was just kind of like, okay, I can take like a hit here or there, but does it have to be like in sequential? Like, I was like, okay, that was well. I feel like I feel like it puts you in their mindset. It's like these guys are so deranged <laughs> because they literally I guess like they're so. they're clocking and clock out is like they're eight hours a day. It's just murder. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well. Anyway. So good movie. Other than that, and um. So yeah, that was just violent. I was. It was pretty thinking. kitschy, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. It was like definitely. I kind of appreciate yeah. when it, when a movie's a little bit kitschy, like um, uh, yeah. I don't know, what's another good one? Like Gunpowder Milkshake. If you've ever seen that, that's a great movie. I, I, it's kind of similar. I think you'd enjoy it if you liked Bullet Train. I'll look it up because I, I don't know. That kind of sounds similar. But yeah, like normally I don't watch. I kind of like steer clear. Of, but I, I I looked up like who was in it and like what was making it. And you're like, if Brad, seems... Pitt's, if Brad Pitt's in it, I'm in. No, not necessarily him, but like. It was kind of like the whole the whole cast and everything and uh, and also I don't I like movies like that once in a while but it's just not my go to like it, it especially nowadays I feel like movies now have gotten so cheesy so like hard to watch sometimes where I'm just like, oh this is so cringe uh-huh. but um but like I watched a movie recently with um Sandra Bullock and Bullet Train oh spoiler alert. <laughs> No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this doesn't look familiar to me. Gunpowder Milkshake. So maybe I haven't seen this. Should see but this it. does look interesting. Is it on Netflix? Uh, yeah. I think it's a Netflix original. Maybe I'm wrong okay. about that. Um, so, anyway, Sandra Bullock. She was in... Blah, blah, blah. The Lake House. Was she... <laughs> no, I did watch that recently. The Blind Side. It was her recent movie. Like Speed. The one that just came out. No, 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 no. Pretty Where she, woman. Go, Wait, she, no, that she gets like kidnapped. She gets kidnapped, and then a guy has to go. Well, oh. this guy who's kind of like in love with her, but they're the like house. he. What's it called? <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, you don't know. Um, I I think I've seen this. Um, the Lost but... City. The Lost City. Yeah, it was Channing Tatum and Sandra yeah. Bullock, and they go on this wacky adventure. Yeah, I did see that. So I. I hadn't seen a movie like that, like, like a blockbuster, I guess is what we call them from the good old days. Oh, you've been that on those. Can... That's another one with Brad Pitt. You've been on those. Oh, he was in that? Yeah. Don't you remember? He was the <laughs> spec ops guy. Super cool. Did freezer. he die? Yeah. Spoiler yeah, okay. alert for that movie, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So anyways, it, it, it was it was better than I thought it was going to be because I was thinking like, oh, uh, it's just like another blockbuster movie. But it actually turned out pretty good. I feel like kind of um, Hollywood is sort of getting into that. Well, Hollywood slash streaming Hollywood. stream The streaming version of Hollywood is becoming very like meta of old Hollywood tropes. Because like they can't get away from them. So they're just making fun of themselves at this point. <laughs> they're just like, <laughs> look, it's a stupid movie. But we know it's a stupid movie. So come see it. Yeah, true. And it also, makes it watchable. Also, actually, speaking of like, so just movie filmmakers who are kind of adapting to this whole new way of life is um people like um oh, what's his name <sighs> alexander hamilton no i'm like so bad about remembering things the the guy who did uh, edward scissorhands 
Yeah, Nightmare Before Elm Street or Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, I assume you're saying Tim Burton. Yes, thank you, Tim Burton. Wednesday. Um. Yes. Okay. So he basically made a movie, but in in bingeable, you know, format. He made it into a series, but it was. Did you watch it? How is that different than a series? <laughs> like what makes? No, it, it is a series. But I have seen I'm it. I'm saying yeah. like he basically he took what he could have made into a film, like a movie. And instead of making it into a movie, he made it into a series. So it's a longer format. It's broken up into different episodes. And he's basically bringing I'm feeling it to see to, how that's like, different than any series. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, No, it's not different than any series. What I'm saying is like, like, ser- like any some series, series could be a movie if made, you cut out 90% of it. Yeah, but like, like most series are created as like meant to be like it was it was created by a TV producer who is creating a TV series. Like, it's not meant to may, like be a complete story. Is that what you mean? Um, Kind of. I mean, this is... I don't think this is going to be a limited series. I think they're actually going to make it into, like, a show. But because it's so popular. Mm-hmm. But I think it was originally meant to be a limited series. But my point being that Tim Burton is not, like, a TV producer. He is a movie producer. He is, like, a film right. guy. And so he's sort of adapting his his style and oh, I see. appealing to people like the mass of people who are now consuming things like in a binge worthy way on Netflix and or like you know like yeah just that's through, cool through platforms versus going to a movie or a theater I guess didn't um to didn't Guillermo del Toro as well like make a series recently when he's normally he like a have. big movie guy yeah um, well that's what I mean like more and more I'm seeing like more and more of that more and more people who normally would do a movie are now doing shows which is oh yeah nice, the cabinet that's what of I like. curiosities <laughs> oh that's i started watching that yeah it's a guillermo del toro one and so then, um yeah it's interesting you're right i think there is now that you say that i'm you unveiled my eyes there's more oh, okay. of these people going okay. towards series that's interesting <laughs> yeah i kind of i like it because it's like well it's good for them too because they probably feel constrained somewhat in, in a film or, or a movie mm-hmm. because they have to do so many edits and cuts to keep it down to a certain amount of time. And now they can, you know, unleash their imaginative ways. Yeah, it's interesting. Long, there's a big, you know? I guess there's people that are more movie people and people that are more like series people. And I think there's a lot of people that yeah. like are kind of lamenting the death of movies. Um, mm. Yeah, and that's an interesting, it's an interesting debate. I don't know if I really fall on one side or the other. I feel like series are just becoming like so profitable and that's probably because of popular opinion. So I guess we're moving in the right direction. Um, yeah. But I don't know if like society as a whole just wants continual like thing. Well, it also might be part in part because of um, the industry just being able to like milk at one IP for as much, you know, as they can. Uh, they don't have to come up with a new idea. They just have to keep coming up with new seasons of the same characters. Right. Yeah, so. which can get old after a while, and so yeah, I think that that's to... the big issue is that people get burnt yeah. out, and so they're like, then they become nostalgic of like when like movies were better, and they could just like go to the movie theater and see like a new idea every time. Whereas now, like the movie theater is mostly a series of its own, like it's like the fifth iteration of you know whatever the Avengers or something. <laughs> like it's like right. okay, well you're again just it's a series, but it's just in two hour formats, and you only release in theaters <laughs> yeah that's kind of why i like limited series because and and not really so much i don't know like there's been a few different um series that i've watched that like the person who created it will say well people say like is there going to be a new season or a new whatever and they're like no i feel like you know i tied up tied yeah, up like the we, to we that told the story well. we gonna- wanted to tell Right, and then they're going to create a different series that's like completely different, but it's by the same people. So you get the same feeling, but it's like a different, different yeah. show, which I kind of like um, because I think I, I'm more of between the two. Like you said, like there's movie people and then there's series people, and I yeah. think I'm somewhere in the middle. And I think I I like I like sort of the deeper connection of um, of a series, but then like the more cinematic style of a movie. So. I don't know. I kind of like when they develop these limited series that that really get into. It just feels more um, in depth, and 
I just, it feels more like I'm reading a book. Like, I guess I, that's the best that I can describe it as is like yeah. when you watch a movie that's been taken from a book, there's so much missing. But I feel like, and like, that's how a series, a limited series feels to me. It's like they're able to take all of the storylines and kind of put them all in because it's a, you can, it can be long enough to accommodate that and not rush through everything. And it gives you time to connect with people and actually like really get into the show. And then, but it also wraps it up all nicely as like a full storyline versus like a TV series where, like you said, like you it just could keep, keep going on and on and on and on. There's like no real foreseeable ending to that. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I can appreciate them all for what they are. Like I like all things, but yeah, I think I fell somewhere in the middle with like my actual favorites. Yeah, there's a few, like, I feel like um, the people who made it, like, Adventure Time do that. They come out with, like, a few. Um, have you seen that one that's on, I think it's, like, Cat Dog? It's, like, the I more recent one. I think also Gravity Falls is made by them or something. Um, they make, like, it's very similar. So, like, if you like that type of animation, they can, mm. uh, you, it's not, like, just a hard end. It's, like, well, we can tell a similar story for similar-minded people. True. Um, I was recently watching an interview of uh, Harrison Ford, which I always feel like I get this weird vibe from Harrison Ford where I'm like, does he secretly hate his job? <laughs> um, but it was <laughs> yeah, pretty, I know what you mean. It was pretty fascinating to see him talk about it. And I feel like I understood him a little bit more and that like, you know, he just likes, he you know, he'll read through a script and I guess like any actor like tries to pick ones that he feels like emotionally connected to or that like he can really tell a good story with and like bring a character to life in and like do something unique and interesting. And so like, I think he just kind of gets fed up when they like a character of his just like keeps getting re like revamped, re put on the screen over and over Mm -hmm. again, like Indiana Jones or he was talking specifically um, at one point about her, uh, Han Solo and how he was like yeah they wanted to bring me back for the new one he's like but I really felt like Han Solo had fully evolved and so you know if I could serve the story by dying that'd be fine but I didn't really want to take it any (laughs) further than that he's like the manner of death was not important I was like I'm only coming back if he dies I just want to die (laughs) kill that character now yeah that's funny it was interesting but I mean like I can't agree with him on the whole like Indiana Jones thing I mean Kind of, because now he's older and there's not a whole lot he could do. But I just feel like all of the shows, all of the Indiana Jones is, are pretty good, I think. Yeah, anyway. Well, there was Crystal Skull or whatever, which is pretty bizarre. But <laughs> Really? I don't really remember that one. Well, there you go. It was the one with Shia LaBeouf <laughs> and there was Aliens. Oh, what the heck? You remember That's that? That's not... <laughs> I do remember that actually, and now that you say that, it absolutely does not belong in the in that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry you had forgotten it existed. Uh, you were yeah. you were almost free of it. Never first. mind. I'm on board with that. Did you ever see that um, time when David Blaine went to Harrison Ford's house and he, <laughs> with the orange? Yes, he's like, <laughs> get great. out of my house. <laughs> it was like it was so serious. He's like, get out. It was get like out. you're a dark wizard, and I won't have you in my home any longer. <laughs> yeah, when you said like sometimes you can't tell if he's being if he if he's being like hard or not like that's kind of how i thought i was like is he being serious or is he joking yeah i don't know it's hard to tell yeah he's a good actor but he is <laughs> yeah that's true i haven't seen him in anything in a while oh uh, but maybe that's yeah, well good. tom clancy stopped writing books <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um all right well i it's been about an hour so time to maybe jump ship uh yeah let's let's think? head on out i'm I'm getting on a ship, actually. I'm going to go to outer space. <gasps> wow. Actually, speaking of shit or like going places, one of my liked updates is I, I went to Colorado while we were on our little hiatus. Oh, yeah. We never talked about your trip that you never went on because you were still going on it. But now you've been on it. Exactly. I think that's where we <laughs> left off, right? I think that makes total sense. Something? Yeah. So... That, that's well, we'll have to talk about it next time. Man, this is a four-episode <laughs> arc of you going to Colorado. <laughs> we keep teasing it. You'll, it better be good. Know. You'll never know how it went. <laughs> okay, guys. Until next time. Toodaloo. Be good. So long, baby. We'll be the cheerio. We'll be back soon. Great. Speaking of aliens, are you okay? <laughs> that's that's the uh, password to get on the alien ship. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, okay.